check. One, two, three, check. Hello? Like this? One, two, three. Mic check.
you could all make your way towards the seats. Ten minutes. Yeah. Ten minutes. Ten. Good morning. <laughs> so welcome back to TCAM. This is for day two of our um, Sunlights Unconference. And I also welcome for those who are joining us uh, for the first time today. My name is Amy Nye. I'm the Partnerships and Training Director at uh, Sunlight Foundation. And I'm Lindsay Young. I'm a developer at Sunlight Foundation. So I know many of you probably had a long night last night. So uh, we are going to do a collective morning stretch. So if everyone can get up out of your seats, that would be great. All right. <laughs> All right, everybody, come on. OK. Arms up. Arms up. We're going to reach to your left. Reach to your left. Reach to the right. Uh, we're going to roll our shoulders. Rolling shoulders. All right. And then we're going to bend down. Bend down. Touch your no toes way. if you can. Stretch goal. And then slowly come up. Slowly coming up. Oh, you guys are all up already. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Thanks, Amy. So uh, we just want to remind you of a few things uh, at TCAM and then tell you for the first time if you're just joining us. Uh, first, uh, feel free to tweet your questions at TCAMPDC and sh go ahead and share your uh, wonderful experience. Uh, use the hashtag TCAMP14. Um, and yesterday, for those who are with us, uh, you know we had a little bit of a technical difficulty with the video. Um, so we're, for an encore presentation, we're actually going to show you the unconference video this morning. And I'm going to keep my fingers crossed in this whole process of clicking things. OK. This is a joke. No, it's OK. Let's see. Ah, there it is. Yay, Yay technology. <laughs> Um, okay, so making it big. This is the second one. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed because the audio was what was we were having issues with. Attendees set the agenda, so whether this is your first unconference or you are a veteran, if you have a session idea, you can make it happen. Give it a solid title and a short description that clearly lays out what you want to do. Submit this and organizers will add it to the lineup, aka the wall. To lead a good session, remember you are facilitating a conversation and not giving a presentation. Throw out the canned speech and PowerPoint, and instead set clear goals and let the conversation unfold. At the start, have folks 
quickly introduce themselves. This sets a tone of equality. Most unconferences keep a wiki or other page for notes. Be sure to use it. Assign a note taker at the start of a session so folks outside the room can get in on the conversation. Then use social media to build the buzz while creating an archive of the action. Mark your updates with the unconference hashtag and you can communicate with anyone watching that tag. Walking into a session, you are a participant and not a member of the audience, so contribute your voice. If you are contributing more than your share, listen so others can be heard. The more folks participate, the better experience for everyone. You are free to come and go from sessions as you please. Do not be bound by politeness to stay in a session. Instead, use your feet to find another one. Creativity is encouraged. Want to host a session in a park? Go for it. Want to host a session about something you aren't an expert in? Go for it. Can't survive without a PowerPoint presentation? Then keep it short. For the best unconference experience, keep yourself open to new ideas. So think big, be friendly, and have a great time. Now we're going to get back to the presentation. <laughs> Thank you, Alicia. OK, um, as yesterday, you can get the TCAMP schedule at tcamp.us backslash schedule 2014. Uh, and lots of information you can get uh, through your phone by texting a question mark to 202-817-CAMP. And uh, we, we, we do have uh, uh, all of our sessions filled uh, for today. Which so. is amazing yeah. because there are 100 sessions. Um, that we had planned for TCAM. So there are a hundred session submissions, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, but that said, from as you saw in the video, we encourage rogue sessions. We encourage you to use this space as a multi-purpose room. So it could be a session space. Outside is beautiful. So just find the people, use Twitter, um, and we will also help you promote uh, sessions as well if there's something that you really, really want to um, uh, have a session for so so let us know um, and as before uh, the wall is behind you uh, the they're still printing it out so there'll be the full session um, uh, the full schedule of all the sessions will be behind you and as Lindsay said you can see online there's also a projection on the fourth floor uh, to help guide you as you are finding out what you're interested in going to um. And don't forget to take notes. Every session has a note page. If you go on the Transparency Camp website and uh, find that session on the schedule, there'll be a hack pad there. Um, and then if you can create a hashtag for your session on Twitter for promotion, that'll help people know how awesome your session is. Um, be sure you tweet your room number and use that hashtag TCAMP14. And as yesterday, we're going to have food trucks. How many people enjoy the food trucks? Yay. Uh, so they're all coming back. Uh, the Bami line was really long, so I would say that if you're interested in the Bami sandwich, get there. Um, uh, and lunch today will be at noon. And you can check out the menu. It's all in your badge. Speaking of badge, um, this is your key to to T camp. So the map is in here. Um, there is. Um, a schedule is in here, and then all of the menu and all the lovely, lovely things about uh, T Camp is in your badge.
And we are also having open gov sandwalks today. That's going to be after lunch in the tables of the multi-purpose room, which is in here. Um, we had some really great projects last uh, yesterday. And uh, gr there's lots of great open government projects to work on. So if you're interested in connecting on one of these uh, projects, every skill set is welcome. So please come by after lunch uh, to those back tables. And uh, once again, we can't do this without um, all of the wonderful sponsors. Special shout out to the digital engagement team with World Bank. And also um, the amazing, amazing, fabulous job uh, ISOC, the uh, Internet Society, is doing with videography and live streams. So I just want to say thank you so much for all of the wonderful, wonderful work. <laughs> uh, and also thank you to all the volunteers. We've had a ridiculous number of people who want to help this year. So everyone with a green shirt, give them a high five when you <laughs> see them. Thank you. Um, and now I'm going to bring Amy Cecil uh, to the stage, and she will once again explain the Legos, which I think a lot of people were confused about yesterday <laughs> at the happy hour. <laughs> okay, so everyone take out your badge and just remind yourself what team you're on. Um, it's on the other side than the QR code, so figure, out, figure it out. Um, Okay, let's hear a shout out for, for all of the yellow suns. Where are my yellow suns at this morning? Are you guys excited to be here? Yeah? Okay. Um, where are Team Blue Fish? <laughs> okay, Red Fire. Where are Red Fire at? Gray Robots? Yeah? How are you doing on your robot? Is it going well? Okay. Uh, team Light Green Poison Ivy. Yeah, in the back. Team Brown Bears. There we go. We got some brown bears excited about the morning. Team orange birds. Orange birds? Fly away today. Uh, team black tent? Black tent? Yeah, black tent! Team dark green trees. Yeah, trees. And finally, of course, team white canoe. Yeah, white canoe! Um, okay, so again today, be excited about your team. Be super friendly to everyone, but even more friendly to your teammates. Um, this is an excuse for you guys to talk to each other and have a little bit of rivalry. Uh, I think I think Team White Canoes are winning right now. I really think so. What is winning? Um, and uh, so I thought everybody wins at T Camp. So what we're doing is everyone got a Lego piece, either yesterday, today, or today, and you are putting your Lego pieces together with your teammates to make a to make your icon. Um, so we will debut those icons in the closing session today. If you were not working on it yesterday, find your teammates today and connect your Lego pieces as with other connections you make at T Camp. Legos are just one more of those connections. So yes, this is your mission. Go, join your Legos, have fun. Yes, camp! Um, and now, Alicia is going to come up and introduce our lightning speakers for today. All right, well, hello, T-Camp. Welcome to day two. Who's excited for day two of T-Camp? <laughs> Woo! All right, it's still early. I'll give you that one. Um, but today, to, to continue the open government conversations that got started yesterday, we are going to have a few lightning speakers for you. And lightning speakers means they have five minutes to talk to you about their open gov idea. So these brave souls are going to be coming up. First up, we have Edgar Rios, who is project officer for Open Puerto Rico. Edgar? Well, good morning, all. Um, as Alicia said, my name is Edgar Rios. I represent Open Puerto Rico. Um, we're a nonprofit organization uh, that's been established, well, maybe three months in Puerto Rico. So before all, all this spiel, I did want to mention I'm a newbie here. So I kind of came up with an idea of what to actually talk about. But uh, given the dynamics that I saw yesterday, well, I think I'll be preaching to the choir. Nonetheless, um, so we're a nonprofit organization that was launched maybe three months ago. Um, basically, we have a three prongs, which is we acquire and compile data, um, and we make it consumable, uh, making it available through our web page 
and also creating visualizations to make it easier for people to understand. Our third prong, which is the most important one, is having actually community outreach. What value is there in all the work that we do if the community do, does not adopt the information nor do they understand it? So basically we will be going out into communities uh, stressing the value of having uh, open data and open government as well as um, being able to use this data for the benefit of the communities and themselves. And ultimately we want them to um, be become empowered with this information. So um, we launched literally on March 5th, uh, 2014. Afterwards, we received a lot of support from individuals, uh, governmental agencies, and from nonprofit organizations. And that has flourished into many uh, collaborations. So at this point, we're literally um, just going to strengthen our webpage right now because we are, we've received support to receive five interns this summer, which hopefully we will be getting uh, a lot more data on our catalog. And also, um, we will be starting with our community impact plan this summer. Obviously, we're confronting all the growing pains that a small nonprofit would uh, confront. But nonetheless, I think what I want to stress during this mini presentation is that the support that has been expressed to all to to the team is pretty much the value that the community sees in uh, open and transparent government and i think that value is general generalizable across uh different contexts uh that said when any one of you are well frustrated or wavering when you can't get a specific piece of information you've requested or if you have to reformat 2500 pdfs Remember that the value that, um, that the community has in what we're doing. And also I wanted to thank uh, Sunlight Foundation for the support that they've given us and for getting us together here today because I've also made connections here that I know will be beneficial for uh, our organization as well as on many others. So um, that's pretty much it. I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the day and have a good one. All right, thank you, Edgar. And next up, we have Ted Henderson, who is the founder of Capital Bells. Ted? Morning, everyone. How's it going? Having fun? Yeah. Yeah. Uh oh. How do I get to the train? Sorry, trying to find the presentation. Did it just click? They were in there. Okay. Yeah, there we go. All right. So yeah, good morning everyone. I'm Ted Henderson, I'm the founder of Capital Bells. Uh, I used to be a congressional staffer until my boss, Dale Kildee, retired at the end of last term. And I started building Capital Bells, which is a, a mobile app to track what Congress is doing in real time. And also to be able to share our opinions with our, our friends and rally support for or against legislation. And. I wanted to come talk to you guys just for a couple minutes about how legislative data and transparency can actually be used to make powerful, cool apps, which I might be a little biased about. Um, so my theory is that apps are, and all this data can actually be used to help Congress do its job. Some of this data is completely open transparent. Some of this data is technically public, but really hard to get at. So like the first data that I use in my app were the data from the clocks on Capitol Hill, which buzz in different weird patterns to let people know what's happening. Is there, is there a vote that's starting? Is there a quorum call? Are we going into recess? And it turned out that there wasn't an API for, for these vote alerts. There were, wasn't an RSS feed. But all the clocks uh, are actually radio-controlled clocks. So we pick up the radio signals that control the clocks so we can turn it into English and send it up to the cloud and give you push notifications. So instead of having to be there on the hill to hear the buzzes and try to figure out what they mean, you just get a push notification that says the votes are starting. And you can open up the app, 
you can find out what the bill is, which is from open data we get from the clerk's office, their XML feed, so we can tell you which bill that we're on, and uh, tweets that follow the fl floor to tell what's going on, you know, minute by minute. And then the uh, other sort of supposed to be public information, but it's really not open, are if any of you watched C-SPAN before, you, know, you see how like there are the yays and nays, and you see how the vote's going. So I kind of get that on the app, but I actually have to take screenshots of C-SPAN, use something called optical character recognition, <laughs> and be able to kind of guess what are these blobs in low resolution? Is it a, is it a 82? Is it a 1? And then be able to kind of show a member of Congress, you know, here's how the vote's going. So I can kind of tell you know, how much time do I have to get down there, or you know, is this bill going to pass or not? But the result is kind of bringing all these disparate data streams together. We have an app that's been very popular on Capitol Hill. There's over 15,000 mobile users. Hundreds of them are members of Congress. Thousands of them are staffers. The press gallery uses it, and lobbyists use it, and in addition to a lot of political junkies like probably a lot of you are. The other side to it is, of course, that transparency means that it's a chance for, you know, it's a chance for us to keep track of what's going on in Congress, but also to be able to, you know, engage our friends and maybe hold Congress accountable or representatives accountable for what they're doing ostensibly for us. So the Capitol Bell's web app, which I launched last month, is sort of a social network for, for Congress, lets you pretty much share your position on bills, kind of describe it in your own language, why you're in support of it, why you're opposed to it, and it translates all our interactions into sort of yay and nay positions that we can compare to a congressman's official record of co-sponsorships and votes. So since launching it last month, we've connected over 20,000 people to open data on the Sunlight Foundation's Congress API, and hopefully it can continue connecting more people. So, you know, basically, my theory is that if we can get more data, we can create more powerful apps doing more useful things. So really, I would like to open up as much as possible of what's going on in our legislator you know, right now in real time. Uh, is, is everyone here from Granicus? You, you stand up? So, like Granicus, you know, they, they have this House Live video feed, which you know, lets you kind of monitor the House floor um, you know, you can have a, if you have a video open. But they also get this, they have a special deal to get this awesome data that has all those live tallies that I have to OCR. So, and they don't, they don't open that up, but you know, they obviously get it. And if they did, there's really cool stuff we could do with it. So you guys should ask them to, to open up that data. Um, you know, closed captioning we can use to tell not just, you know, that there's a debate going on, but who's speaking and what they're speaking about in a digital form. Uh, amendment data, oftentimes we don't actually know, have the real amendment data until after the amendments already been voted on, especially in an open rule. We don't see it until after they've already decided on it. And then committees, committees, you know, you really have to be in a committee to find out what's going on. So like, what if we could get all of this data, you know, we could actually sort of have sort of this virtual digital representation of Congress that we can you know, check into at any time and we can interact with and we can interact with our community about and maybe do some constructive stuff. Um, so that's it. Uh, email me if you have any questions and thank you very much. All right, thank you, Ted. And next up, we have Paul Lentz, Head of Finance and International Projects for My Society, joined by, they're doing this together in five minutes, Felipe Heusler, founder and co-director of Ciudadano Atalandete. Okay, okay. Do you have enough space? Okay, uh, hello, good morning. Um, thank you, Sunlight, again, for hosting this great camp. Uh, again, it's been several years. I actually was here uh, four years ago, and it's, it's really the community here has, has changed. My name is, is Felipe Joiser. I'm the director of Ciudad Inteligente, which is a civic tech NGO that is focused in Latin America, uh, and, but we're based in Santiago, Chile. And I'm Paul Lenz. I'm from my society in the UK. We live in different continents and we work for different organizations. But because we have the same kind of challenges when it comes to civic technologies, 
we're here together to represent the same thing, and that thing is Populus. Yeah, Populus is a civic technology, it's a civic hacking activist group that was born just a couple of weeks ago in a conference in Santiago, Chile. We had people from about 28 countries coming to this conference, founding this, this new community. We are a diverse kind of community. We built different kinds of technology from spotting corruption to channeling citizen participation, trying to empower citizens in different kinds of ways. We're also a diverse group of people. We have civic hackers, we have journalists, and people that come from the policy side. They're interested in freedom of information, in participation, and good governance. Um, but, you know, though we are a diverse group of people uh, and we share civic values, that is not the only thing that, that we have in common as a group. What we have in common is that we hate waste and we love civic activism. If you wanted to set up a blog, you wouldn't try and code a new version of WordPress from scratch. Yet with civic technologies like FOIA websites or street fault reporting or monitoring elections, we so often see groups around the world facing the same technical problems attempting to create their own technical solutions. Now, if we had the budgets of Silicon Valley startups, that might not be a problem. But we don't. Our budgets are tight, and this kind of duplication of effort makes it harder for us to achieve our main goals. Instead of trying to change the world, we end up trying to fix bugs, bugs that other people have already found the, pro the solutions to in Malaysia or South Africa or Australia. We also make the same mistakes in outreach and engagement and citizen engagement that others have already faced and overcome. So I think Paul's right. We, we, we hate uh, wasting time and the very few resources that sometimes of civil society we have. Um, we hate duplicating efforts. And it's not that we have like the, the, you know, a strong, solid, and proved solution for it. What we have is the persuasive and also strong feeling that the answer to face the civic technology problems uh, that we have across the world has to do with sharing and has to do with more sharing, but also has to do with better kind of sharing. So the problem that many of us at the civic technology uh, space have is that sharing so far has meant going open source, sharing the code, saying, yeah, that's my GitHub repo. Just take a look at the uh, stuff we have doing. And I think we can be much more proactive than, than that so far. So the first thing we need to do a better job of is sharing stories. We're going to share them online, and we're going to share them offline at fantastic events like this. What kind of stories? Some of the stories that you maybe heard yesterday. Stories like how you can get 10,000 people to contribute to a transparency project in Taiwan. How you can get a FOIA law changed in Uruguay. Our members are going to be around the world at events encouraging people to share, particularly in places where the civic hacking community is relatively new and relatively isolated. So as important as sharing stories is, we're also going to share technology. And what we have come up as a community at Poplus uh, is the idea about the Poplus components. These are single function, ultra reusable pieces of code that solve a very, very specific, but also common kind of problem. So this, each component is not a, a full website. It, it is a section. It is a very specific function uh, within this, the website. But that component may serve other websites as well. Now, so far as a community, we have built a couple of components to prove kind of this hypothesis. Uh, we have some components out there. These are a couple of them. For example, you have Puppet there. It's a component that structures and gives, provides data about um, people, uh, like politicians. You have Billet that organizes structures. It's a REST API that provides data about bills, documents, laws, and so forth. And say it that structures and, and serves data about um, debates, uh, conversations, and so far. Now, this, these components that exist, single function, uh, have been implemented not just in theory, but actually in real life. This is a website that we're uh, launching in Chile next week that does parliament monitoring, right? It has the typical stuff. It has information about the members of Congress. It has bills, voting records, <coughs> so far. But the big difference, it's, it's a more powerful kind of website. And it's also much cheaper. It costs us less, six times less than our previous effort. And that is because it's using populace. It's using the components and the pieces of code built by the different members of the community. So for example, we're using Puppet to organize the data about the members of Congress. We're using Billet to organize and structure data regarding documents. In this case, bills and the laws we're being discussing in Congress. 
uh, we also write it with uh, stores and serves data about email exchange and iteration between citizens and members of Congress. Now these components, again, you know, that website is using components built by the community in different corners of the world. And this is happening in different parts as well. We have the same components, the same race APIs, serving transparency websites in different corners, in places like Morocco, like Canada, like in, in Chile, like in the UK, uh, like in Nigeria. Uh, and this community is growing, and we really want you to be part of it. So there's so much more we could say than I was going to say in five minutes. Unfortunately, we've overrun slightly. Sorry, six minutes. Um, but I want to end on just one note, and that is Populous needs you. We need you to share. What that means in practice is that we want people to become members. There's no entrance fee. There's no commitment. Or you don't have to agree to anything other than it's a good idea to share. We're a cooperative. We're led by our members. And the paths that we're going to take in the coming months and years will be defined by those people who come along and sign up. Please come and find us over the course of the next couple of days. There are populous people in the room. Do you want to stand up? Stand up, wave your hands, wave your hands. And on that note, thank you for TCAP for letting us speak. Thank you all very much. And there's sweets. We have candy and stickers for anyone who likes candy and stickers. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Excellent. Well, thank you to Paul and Felipe. And speaking of sweets and candies, we don't have those, but we do have a few handouts while we get our next lightning speaker, Rachel Hatch, who is actually going to be coming to us from Redding, California. And that's a three hour time difference. So it's a little early there. Let me see if I can wake her up and uh, get her on the Google Hangout. Meanwhile, Amy and Lindsay are going to talk to you a little bit about National Day of Civic Hacking, which is also happening this weekend. Uh, so how many people here are familiar with National Day of Civic Hacking? Yeah, awesome. So, uh, ooh, I am leaning on the podium. We're all moving. Um, so it's, it's actually this weekend, there are events happening all across the US and actually around the world as well. I think there are over 100 events that are scheduled. Um, so we're bringing Rachel in uh, from California. She's gonna talk a little bit more about the event that she planned um, in California. And we're calling her now. Um, and as well, uh, there are, they've sent us a number of swag. That's what's on the tables in the back. And we've got wristbands that Lindsay's trying to throw at you. Whoa, watch out. <laughs> um, so they are awesome. And you should also follow their hashtag to see what are some of the great events that are happening and what are some of the work uh, that they're working on. Um, their hashtag is uh, hack for change. And I'm going to let Rachel talk a little bit more about it. Oh, I think we have her. Rachel, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? We can. It's so not fair. I can't hand out candy and treats to you all like the last speakers. <laughs> I'm sad. <laughs> Excellent. Well, you have five minutes to talk about National Day of Civic Hacking, so how about it? Great. I'm just going to turn on my timer here since I know you all can't exactly pull me off with the shepherd's crook like you could other speakers. Okay. I come to you from Redding, California, which is a community of about 90,000 people. I would describe it as rural-ish. Uh, so, you know, even though it's 90,000 people, if you go right outside of town, you may end up in uh, on ranch or ag land, or you may end up in a national park. So that's that's the place that I'm coming from. We have a fledgling community of civic hackers who are participating in the National Day of Civic Hacking for the first time this year. And when we looked around and tried to think of, well, what are we actually prepared to try to address as civic hackers, we're not quite at the stage where we are ready to develop an app or to hack uh, materials you know, in a, in a um, matter stream sort of sense. But what we decided we needed to do is to try to hack the narrative of our community, so hack the story of Reading. Um, when Reading makes the news, so if you were to Google Reading California right now, um, you would find stories that you know are on the national news just in the past couple of months, like um, Gallup did a poll of well-being of 189 different communities across the, the country, and Reading uh, made the news by ranking 187th out of 189 communities across the country. Uh, and then just to add insult to injury, just recently uh, we made the Wall Street, a Wall Street Journal article about how we were ranked as the third most miserable city in the U.S. Uh, so you can start to imagine, I, I personally don't think it's the third most miserable city, but if this, this is sort of what you find if you Google Redding, California. Um, and we're a place that's really badly in need of attracting talent. So we're you know, about three hours north of San Francisco by car, 
Um, so we're kind of on the San Francisco to Portland corridor, and um, we're in this transition moment in terms of industry, moving from sort of logging and mining industry to potentially becoming a hub for uh, digital, the digital workforce of Northern California. So we were imagining, well, what, what should we hack for the National Day of Civic Hacking? We really need to hack the story of Reading, and we decided to start doing that by uh, editing our Wikipedia page, getting a group of people together. We looked at the, you know, Wikipedia for Reading, California, and we surveyed it, and we thought, huh, well, if I was, if I was a, you know, talented young engineer, for instance, in Portland, and I was looking to move someplace, and I googled Reading, California, I'd find, you know, Gallup and Third Most Miserable City. Uh, but I would also find the Wikipedia page, and I'd probably check it out. Um, so we surveyed our Wikipedia page and decided that would be a good, um, a good thing that we could tackle just in the course of an afternoon for the National Day of Civic Hacking. If you look at our page, we have, um, just to give you a sense of what you might encounter, there, um, there you might find a description of the Cascade Theater, for instance, which is this lovely Art Deco renovated theater that's in the heart of our downtown that's in the, in the early stages of a real revitalization. Um, but you would also find four times more by word count about an anecdote in our history of uh, a historic lynching, which, which features prominently on the Wikipedia page. And so we were, you know, the, a group of us were sitting around saying, shouldn't someone do something about that? And we realized, okay, well, Wikipedia, anyone can author it, anyone can edit it, edit it, so we should just undertake that. So our event is coming up this weekend. We have a small group of um, coders and creatives and writers and developers who are going to assemble, um, all of whom are community-minded, fledgling civic hackers. Um, and we thought, well, what can we accomplish in the course of three hours? So we're, we're going to look at the Wikipedia page and take an additive kind of approach. So as we scan it, we really ought to be added that objectively uh, would reflect some of the vital activity that's happening in our, in our community so that we might just begin to change the narrative. Um, so let me just kind of open source our agenda. This will be my last thing, um, what we're aiming to do. First, we're going to start by building a literacy of the commons in the group. So we're going to share the five pillars of Wikipedia just to bring everyone up to a shared perspective about how Wikipedia operates and how we can be good citizens of Wikipedia. Um, we have a, a local person who's a former Wikipedia administrator, so from his experience, he'd share with us about how to get smart around authoring and editing a Wikipedia article, just give us some advice about that. We have a section where we're going to co-create a vision for how to hack the narrative of Reading. Um, so this will be, you know, rapid fire sticky notes where we'll start to cluster the kinds of things that we want to add to the Wikipedia page. Uh, we have a process where we're going to check our bias because after all, Wikipedia is an encyclopedia and so we want to make sure that we're being objective. You know, in Wikipedia language, we want to avoid puffery or sort of this peacock syndrome of saying, this is the best thing about our community. So we want to check our bias and do that in quite a disciplined manner. Then we'll actually make the edits uh, to the Wikipedia page. And finally, we will acknowledge that it's the nature of Wikipedia that the work that we're putting together for our National Day of Civic Hacking event may get undone. Others will continue to edit it, hopefully build on it. Uh, but it may be undone by you know, the evening after our event. And isn't that kind of the way that community operates, actually? Um, so this is, that's our, our experiment. And it's early stage. We're learning a lot as we go about how to do this, and um, we'll be sharing the, the National Day of Civic Hacking is gathering stories from after the event, so we're going to make an intentional effort to share that out and give people visibility into how it goes. Thanks for having me. Excellent. Thank you, Rachel. I was just going to say that poor, poor Rachel was looking at the wall the whole time, so I'm going to see if this is, if I don't break anything. Okay. Oh, cool. I'll take a screenshot of who I'm I am. do a little bit of, well, there's wait, are you see people? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Great to be with you. Thank you so much. What? Um... Uh, Do you hear that? So no. we have a gentleman from Providence, uh, Rhode Island, that's uh, using local wiki, uh, and that might yeah, be yeah. 
a, a more um, useful and appropriate platform he was suggesting for you guys in Reading. So. Yeah, we, we've been, that's, that's on our radar screen. We definitely need to check that out more. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much again. And have a great Take event care. today. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so we just want to thank all our Lightning uh, Talk speakers and uh, hearing about your stories. It's just been fantastic hearing from in Puerto Rico to Redding, California to around the world. Uh, so And also the Halls of Congress. We don't want to forget that. So just thank you so much. And now the wall is ready for you. Um, so you can go and check out the, the different sessions that we have for the first session and just have a great uh, tea camp. And I'll see you back here for the closing session um, after uh, at five. <laughs> Thank you.